Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're gonna to take a look at how to make your grass as green as your neighbor's or your neighbor's grass as green as yours. Making grass green, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now I live in the Atlanta area and one thing that I noticed when I relocated here a few years back was that in the winter time, grass can look really brown, like not green, really brown. It just really depends on what type of grass was planted. Some grass stays green all year round, but for the most part, grass is brown here. And I noticed someone posted an image on social media and they got like, they had more attention on the grass than they got on the subject, which wasn't the grass. And they kind of tried to explain, hey, this is, this is a Georgia thing, grass is brown down here. And um, anyway, I'm gonna show you how to fix it, especially if you're in the real estate, posting pictures of homes in the wintertime, you want that grass to just look good. You're posting pictures of your own home, you want the grass and landscape to look good. So for example, let me show you what we got. So this is, uh, these were all taken in the fall, winter time. So this is actually near the lake of, near my house. And you can see on the left-hand side, the grass is very brown, typical color for this time of year. And around this time of year, going forward, that grass will turn green, just like it does on the right-hand side of this image. Now, if I uh, go to the next one, this is actually at the lake, brown all the way around, just brown grass. And if we go here, this is actually a situation where they do have green grass on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, but it looks like they're laying down some new sod. And of course, it's taken on that, that winter brown property. So this is the Savannah College of Art and Design. And this is their Atlanta campus downtown. I went and grabbed some shots for them. And uh, you'll, you'll, uh, they probably want that grass to look good. So let's go ahead and fix it. There's also a couple other things we can, we can go ahead and take care of in this image as well. Let's start with some of the things that are bothering me besides the green grass. The building itself looks like it's leaning in. And this can often be affected by a couple of things. Number one, uh, enabling the lens profile correction for the camera this was shot with. That will kind of fix any bowing and curvature from the lens itself. Now I shot this with my iPhone 12 Pro Max. So I shot this as an as a Apple raw, raw file, um, Pro Raw file, and I brought it into Lightroom. All right, so we got that done. Now let's go into the geometry, which is gonna help us take care of the building itself. And I have upright, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and pop this into uh, auto upright. Now I'm doing this on my iPad Pro. And um, I, I could just as easily do this on my iPhone, the same phone that I shot it on, but it's just easier to see it on a bigger screen, plus I have the Apple Pencil for pressure sensitivity. All right, now that we got that, next thing we're gonna do is, remember I said I shot this with um, uh, Apple's Pro Raw on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And if I go here in the profiles, we now include, and we will select it going forward automatically, an Apple Pro Raw profile to kind of make the colors look the way they looked on the back of the camera. So that looks more like what I was seeing on this dreary, rainy day in downtown Atlanta. All right, so now that I got this uh, all set, the next thing we wanna do is of course we wanna go in, we'll work on maybe the sky a little bit later, but let's go ahead and take care of this grass situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my selective adjustments. Let's get out of profiles, go to my selective adjustments. I'm gonna tap the plus sign in the upper left corner and I'm gonna tap the paintbrush. You have a paintbrush, radial and gradient graduated filters. All right, so let's go ahead and, and grab the paintbrush. Now with the paintbrush, you can control the size uh, this, little, this little dot here, dragging up and down for the size. You can control the hardness, so you can make it a hard edge brush or a soft edge brush by dragging that as well. You, um, and actually, I'll also control some of the feathering. So let's go ahead and just start painting in the grass. Now, when I paint the grass in, you'll notice, and, and a lot of times I love a soft brush, but when I'm painting something that has edges like this, well, the edges aren't soft, they're hard. So let's go ahead and use a nice hard brush on, on this situation. Now, um, you're probably gonna wanna zoom in so you can get a really detailed and better job. And I noticed that until you paint at least one stroke, you can't like pinch and zoom. But once I painted a stroke, I can now pinch and zoom and get in there and really uh, get closer and uh, fill this area in. If you overspill, you can undo your stroke or you can just use the eraser to erase off the parts that you don't need. I really don't worry about spillage until, I'm, until I've actually started making my adjustments and seeing if that spillage even shows up. If it does, then I'll go fix it. If it doesn't or I miss spots, then I'll go ahead and address it at that time. But right now, I'm not so much worried about it. I just wanna make sure I get all the areas filled in. Missed a spot there. Let's get that in. Okay, so now all this did, you're saying, well, Terry, that's, that's red, that's not green. All this did was just simply mask the area. 
Now, once you make any adjustment, that adjustment will show up. So we're gonna jump right over to color. We have a few ways of affecting the color to get the color kind of just right. Now, I kind of want to match the other grass that's already there. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit more so I can see it. I have the new local hue adjustment, that big hue color band right there. And I also have temperature and tint and also um, things under the light um, cat category that can help me as well. So let's go ahead and grab hue to kind of get it in the range of green. So we just drag the hue over ever so slightly. We don't want to go too far. They'll turn it into neon or blue something like in this area. Now, a couple things. That's the green kind of in the category I'm looking for, but that's uh, too bright. And also, I can see the spots I missed. So this is what I meant by, uh, once I can see the color, then I'm going to keep painting to kind of paint over those spots. And then I can, I can keep trying to adjust it that way. I can even use a fine adjustment so that it, it, it does it at a slower pace. So I can dial in just the right color. But what I'm probably going to end up doing is saying that that's about the range I want. Then I'm going to maybe add a little green tint to it as well. That might be overdoing it just a much, but just a little bit. Let's do a little bit more. That's too much right about there. And then the problem is that it's also very bright. You remember that patch of brown was very bright compared to the green on the left and right hand side. So let's bring down the exposure a bit. There we go. Now that's starting to dial it in and get it the color we want. It also shows us more spots we missed or I missed. So I'm just go ahead and paint those in. And this is what I meant by doing the, the last little bit of fill in after the fact, because I, this is when I can see it as opposed to trying to figure out where the red mask is. All right. So now that I've done that, and that's why I say I wasn't too worried about the spillage because I don't see it now. You can zoom in, you can be very nitpicky about it and get it just right. I see some spillage on the cement. I definitely want to clean up. But you get the idea that that's going to now start to give me the green that I want. So now I, I brought the exposure down just a bit. I might also play with the shadows. Bring the shadows down. That's starting to turn more like green grass. And uh, let's zoom out a little bit more. I can see some edges over here I miss now. There we go. Good, good, good. And that's really starting to get into the color range I'm looking for. And again, you can play with any of the other adjustments, including you might want to go to effects. You might want to add just maybe a slight amount of dehaze to that area you painted as well to kind of, again, make that grass nice, rich and green. So it's not just one thing. It's not just the color. It's also the tint and trying to trying to make it look like good looking green grass. You have several controls for doing this. And the best part is this is all non-destructive. Now I said that there's probably some on that cement block that I don't want. I can see a little bit there. So I grab the eraser and I just erase that off. Yeah, it was a lot of it. I can erase that off that little pedestal there that should not be green and take care of that. And again, if you, if you do too much, you can undo, you can always come back with a brush while you've got this adjustment selected and continue to brush in. And even if you deselect this adjustment, you can always come back in, grab the point where you started painting uh, to select it so that you can continue brushing. All right, let's get all that done. Good, good, good. And now we can zoom out and now we can take a look at the sky. Now, again, that is what the sky looked like because it was a rainy day, but we don't have to make it, we don't have to keep it like that, do we? No, we don't. Let's go ahead and go to, back to our selective adjustments and let's add one more. So we're going to add in this time a linear or uh, linear gradient, linear, or linear, yeah, linear gradient. <laughs> All right, so let's grab that one and I can even pull it in at an angle. So pull it in a nice angle, pull it down and get that. And now what we do with that is up to us. So if, for example, we might want to just simply lower the exposure in that area. We might want to go back to color and add in some blue to kind of just make that sky, that part of the sky a little bluer, maybe the temperature, just a little bluer in that area. I don't mind a temperature adjustment for the sky anytime. And of course, we can go back to effects. We can go into dehaze and just simply dehaze that a bit. Don't go too far, You'll, it will look bad. Just enough to kind of make it not look so drab and so blue. All right, so then we can, of course, move this around, kind of get that right there and get our perfect sky for a rainy, about to rain day. <laughs> so now, 
we came a long way pretty quickly. And sometimes you're looking at the finished one and it's like, oh, okay, that looks, yeah, it looks okay. Until you see the before and after, it's really hard to judge it. So now I'm gonna take one finger and hold it down anywhere on the image. And that's our before, that's where we started. Look at the building, look at the sky, look at the grounds and let go and that's our after. So I think the Savannah College of Art and Design would be much happier with this version of their building in Atlanta. And we may be even going to Photoshop and remove that red, um, <laughs> that red fence uh, that they're doing the construction on to even make it better. But you get the idea. It's making me want to go to Photoshop now. But you get the idea. Quick adjustment in Lightroom to make your grass as green as you want it to be. Cheers, everyone. Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.